All right, everybody, welcome uh, to our first module on Asian history to 1600. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking all about Asia's geography. And so hopefully you've already read through some of the module already. Um, and for this portion of the module, we're going to be looking at the different perspectives from professionals on where Asia is in the world. And you'd be surprised, but this is a quite contested issue. How do you define the borders? And we'll be going over through some of the complications in defining the borders of Asia in this video, as well as a couple other videos that you'll be directed to watch in this module. So let's begin uh, our bird's eye view of Asia's geography. Um, so all the material for what I'm going to be talking about comes directly from the introduction to our book, A History of Asia by Rhodes Murphy. Um, for this week, you don't have to do any reading for the class. You just need to listen to this lecture because I'll be doing an overview of pretty much everything that's included in the introduction. So all this comes straight from the introduction. I didn't come up with it, citing my sources properly. Um, so uh, the introduction talks about how it's important to break down our study of Asia because just like we study French history in the context of Europe as a whole, we also want to study the various cultures of Asia within the context of Asia as a whole. So we have to understand Asia if we're going to understand China and Korea and Vietnam, um, just like we have to look at the, the real global context of Europe um, and what's going on across the continent of Europe if we really under want to understand France's history or Germany's history. So that's what we do with Asia. We want to break it up into smaller chunks. Um, and the book makes the case that we shouldn't just break it up into chunks of nationalities, so China, China Japan, uh, Cambodia. What we really want to do is look at cultural similarities and regions of cultural diffusion, really. And so our book labels that uh, Monsoon Asia. That's the cultural lens through which they look at Asia's history. So we are going to mainly, for the most of this video, we're going to be looking at um, Google Earth um, and to get a better global understanding of where Asia is and what we'll be talking about for this class. So here we are at San Diego State University. There's the Love Library um, it, that I hope many of you spend a lot of time in. Um, there's East Commons, uh, the Open Air Theater, the Grass Fields, Frat Row. I hope you don't spend any time there. Um, zooming out, we can get a picture of San Diego as a whole. The 8 Freeway, Balboa Park. Um, there's Coronado Island, Point Loma. Zooming out, just wanting to give you guys a sense of where you are, because I know a lot of us aren't comfortable with our maps, and so that's why I want to really give you a detailed overview of where we are in the world. Um, so here's Southern California. You see Los Angeles, um, Arizona going over here. We can see all of the West Coast now. Um, and here's the whole United States. So here's a map of the U.S., and then boom, we zoom out a little more, and there's the whole globe. Look at that. So question, which way should we go to get to East Asia? We should go west. If you said west, you are correct. Uh, you can also go east, this direction. It just takes a little longer if you're trying to get there by plane. Um, so the most direct way, especially if you're flying by plane, but also for our purposes, is to go east, pass by Hawaii. Many of you think Alaska is somewhere over here, but it's actually connected to Canada and than the U.S. over here. It's not an island in the Pacific Ocean like it looks on a map, uh, but Hawaii is an island chain in the midst of the Pacific Ocean. We go all the way across the giant Pacific Ocean and we finally get to East Asia and you have China here, uh, Southeast Asia, that's uh, Vietnam, uh, you got Thailand in here, um, and then India over here, uh, the Middle East, which connects to Africa, there's the continent of Africa, um, and then we go back over and go north, and you have Russia, and then you see this line of Russia kind of is the main, well, actually, yeah, this line of Russia is kind of where people divide Europe and Asia. Over here is Europe, over here is Asia. But as you can see, clearly, they're one contiguous landmass. There is no, these borders are drawn by humans. If I zoom out, they go away, but the weather kind of obscures it. But you can see this is all one contiguous landmass. So how do we study this part of the world if it is so massive? So I'm going to show you what the book means by the term monsoon Asia on the globe. Um, as you can see, if you're looking closely, you can see this kind of, this dark line 
on the outside of this region. Here's Indonesia, which is usually included in um, uh, Asia as a continent, and then all the way through here. And so this dark line, and then within that dark line is a bunch of greenery, um, which is the, this very similar climate that this whole part of the world experiences. And then once you get past it, you get into uh, central China, where it's very dry, very high altitude, and then the Middle East, also very dry with a lower altitude. Um, and so the book makes the case that this region, because of its similarity in climate, is worth being studied um, as, a, as a whole. So um, the reason for that is that um, the book gives a really long explanation. If you're interested in more of the scientific perspective on this, I have some videos in this module you can look at to give to, to feed your scientific appetite. But a brief overview of the climate of this region: there's this this hot air builds up on this uh, on the plateaus up here, and it blows over onto the Pacific Ocean where it cools down. It pressurizes and creates these massive storms that roll in, and as soon as they hit the they call it a continental shelf. Imagine you're carrying a bunch of books, like a huge stack of books, and then you smack into something and you spill your books all over the thing that you smacked into. Um, that's like what happens with these storms. They smack into this shelf and they spill out onto this whole region, creating these massive monsoon storms. Um, and it affects, there's an there's a Asian monsoon, and I have a whole video connected to this in the optional resources section. And then there's an Indian monsoon that creates a similar phenomenon over here. And so what that does is it creates a very unique culture, specifically because of the way that weather and geology interacts in this region. And so it makes it worth studying this this region um, as its own entity separate from the Middle East, Central Asia, Russia. Um, so that's why we study this region in this class. So to get back to our slides, um, just some quick other things that unify this region. Here's the book's map of Monsoon Asia. You can see there's lots of mountains, similar topography going on in here. That's why we studied this region um, so specifically. Uh, Japan, Korea, the Koreas. Uh, China, Southeast Asia, India, and then we won't really be looking at Pakistan because it's kind of a periphery uh, region, and the book talks about that as well. Um, but yes, so besides climate, there are cultural similarities, which um, some argue are caused by these climate similarities. Uh, the, the cultures in monsoon Asia are usually collectivist cultures, meaning they don't uh, emphasize individuality, they emphasize community structure. So um, it's very community oriented. Um, you operate in, uh, you think for what is best for your community and your people rather than just what is best for you. That's kind of the mindset that drives a lot of these cultures. Um, there's a consistent veneration of elders across these cultures, um, and then usually a submissive role given for women. Um, that's pretty typical here, although that's pretty typical worldwide, um, but that's something the book distinguishes here. And then there are a lot of similarities in agriculture products and staple foods, rice being a major one. Uh, wheat is also grown in other uh, cereals like sorghum. Um, and others, but uh, rice is a major staple, whereas in the West, often it is wheat and flour that are, and bread that are the main staples. Um, so lastly, why study monsoon Asia? Um, as I've talked about in this video, it's important to study parts of Asia and break down this very large region into manageable chunks. And so we are just looking at the region that has a that has a lot of similarities. Um, I didn't talk about religion and philosophy because we'll be talking about that next week, uh, but there is an incredible uh, syncretism and similarity in religion and philosophy as well. So that's why we study monsoon Asia. Um, over the rest of this module, you'll be looking at other people's perspective on how you should study Asia and why it's so complicated. Uh, but for now, that is my take. Uh, good luck with the rest of this uh, module. See you next time.